Um, hello, good evening, everyone. Um, once again, we welcome you to today's class. Uh, my name is Godson Kelly, and I'm going to be your moderator for today. Um, while we wait for the rest of the team members to join, as a join, please drop your names on the chat box and your party. I can see many people dropping, so you've not dropped drop that for your attendance. And then you can also reach out to your party members. I believe you guys are in the same WhatsApp group. Maybe you can call and let them know that class is on. Right, so just give like four more minutes to get more people to join. Um, our facilitator is already here with us. So we'll introduce him in the next four minutes uh, so that we can start. Right. Thank you so much. All right, um, once again, good evening um, to those that are just joining us. Um, we are going to introduce our facilitator and then we'll start, right? Um, today's topic, it's a very important topic and something I think everybody should pay rapt attention. We're going to be talking about the local government administration. And um, you all know um, how important the local government is. It is the closest tier of government to the people. And most times people don't pay attention to the local governments. Everybody is focused on the center, the president, and sometimes the governor. So we lose touch of what we are supposed to be doing by holding public leadership at the local government level accountable. Um, so today we have someone that is very 
vast and knowledgeable and expert in local government um, studies. And he's going to be taking us on today's class. So I'm going to read, read his citation and then I will welcome him to the, the class. So the person that will be taking us today is uh, Dr. Abdul Hamidu Abdullahi. So Abdullahi is a PhD holder in local government and development studies with many years of working experience at administrative managerial level, field work and volunteerism. He commenced his working career with Nuhu Babali Polytechnic Zaria, then Kaduna State College of Advanced Studies, where he rose to the rank of senior lecturer. He was the head of Department of General Studies and later Deputy Dean at Federal Polytechnic Nasrawa. He presently works at Ahmad Bello University area, where he is involved in teaching, research, and community development at the Department of Local Government and Development Studies. He has held many other responsibilities, such as Secretary, National Conference Organizing Committee of the Department of Local and Development Studies, Staff Advisor of Association of Students of Local Government and Development Studies, Patron of Junior Chambers International, GCI, um, Coordinator of Diploma Programs, Editorial Board Member of Zaria Journal of Arts and Liberal Studies. In terms of writing and publishing academic research work and presentations, he has many conference papers, journal articles and chapters in some books to his credit. Dr. Abdul is the producer of a radio program in Hausa language at DITV, Al Heri Radio 97.7 FM, Zaria, called Jamia Da Jamia an assistant research fellow at Center for the Democratic Development Research and Training, member of Board of Trustees, Funtua Community College of Health Sciences and Technology, chairman of Initiative for Orphans and Vulnerable Persons, NGO, Zaria and patron, Harmony Youth Muchia Zaria. He's also a member of Community Development Chair at CDC and the World Integrity Champion of the Ward Dogarawa Sabun Gerizaria under the auspice of Ed Foundation, a registered NGO involved in advocacy and development. Professionally, he's a member of International Association of Community Development, Scotland, the West African Research and Innovation Management Association, WARIMA, Nigerian member of Network Against Child Trafficking, Abuse and Labor. He is the Deputy Director, not Central, of the Electoral College, Nigeria. He was recently named an Associate Professor of Local Governance and Development Studies from the prestigious Amadou Bello Zara. Um, at this point, I want to welcome Dr. to take um, the platform. Dr. Good evening, sir. You're welcome. Thank you very much, Godson. Uh, Dr. Ha uh, sorry, Professor Hamid, thank you very much for this. Um, the college is always proud to have you uh, when they're ready. I was moved. So welcome, uh, Professor Hamid. It's a pleasure, and we look forward to your lecture, sir. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, uh, my ED Africa. The second year of uh, uh, political literacy in Nigeria. Am I audible enough? Okay, <laughs> uh, you see, whenever the ED calls me, I don't have any option. Right now, I'm in a, uh, I'm in a, uh, Azere in Bauchi State. Uh, I came for what is called participatory rural appraisal. I just left the village, Gadawana. Uh, That's great, sir. That's where I was born, sir. Oh, that's very good. That's, I'm happy to hear that. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm supposed to go to the next village, Chinadi. So I told them that, please let them go. I have uh, my August assignments on my neck. So I don't have to <laughs> <laughs> hey, Professor, thank you very much. Sir. Thank you very thank much. You, thank you.
Prof, I, I think your network is bad, Prof. You might need to. I think uh, I, I'm one members of the cohort because uh, they knew uh, very wonderful today. Okay, let's keep listening. It is called Jami. Is it better now? It is the it is village yes. now. So what yes. can I do? It's better now. Can you? It's okay. uh, is the it is village. So <laughs> what is happening? It is. So as I was saying, uh, let us make a little correction. It is called Jamia. Jamia means university. Then Jamaa means people. So there's a Hausa program that is called in English town and gown. We are just looking at, uh, it's a voluntary Hausa program. I've been running it for the past two years on voluntary basis. So nobody's paying me any cover, just like my ED is running the, ED, the electoral college. Uh, although he's, uh, he's a big man, me, I'm not a big man. Sure. So uh, local government administration, he, the introducer has already said it. Everybody is from a local government. So what is it? Do you, what do you want to know? Anyway, let's see the slide and then let's see whether we have something to... Uh, can you move the slide, please? This is the presentation outline. Pass it. Pass the presentation outline, please. They have seen it. Now, this, this I, I begin by trying to give you a cap or what you may call a recap, that local government is not new in the world. All over the world, there is local government. And then it is called differently in different countries. We have that of uh, the, the, the communists. Then we have that of the, the French-speaking country. We have that of the German and the rest of them. So it is not a new thing. Next slide. The reason why I said this is later on, you will come to realize that uh, the reason behind uh, uh, the, the local government not functional in Nigeria. Now, then the local government also have the, uh, we have the parliamentary type of local government uh, in a system in which the executive and the legislators are uh, almost uh, at the same level. Uh, they enjoy adequate local autonomy and uh, the rest, but in the case of Nigeria, this is not uh, possible because uh, they also have enjoyed full control of the management of local government staff. As you can come to, as we shall come to see, this is not uh, really uh, feasible in Nigeria. It has not been feasible uh, despite the various uh, local government reforms that have been taking place. Uh, next slide, please. Ah, thank you very much. You see, the local government is a definite area according to the 1999 constitution. It's a given entity that can sue and be sued, recognized by the 1999 constitution amended. Now it has, in Nigeria, we have 774 local government areas. And then we have Abuja that has six area councils. We shall come to see the problem of these area councils much later. And then it has levels of legislative framework it has its own assembly, and it has the ability to make its laws and then bylaws also. Next. Now, the local government in the constitution, we don't need to spend time on this. These are the various sections of the local government, uh, uh, various sections in the 1999 constitution that speaks about the local government. This one is a bit uh, clear because it's just a theory, uh, as we shall come to see later. It's so beautiful. It says uh, provision for the establishment of the economy planning board with the local government, uh, special joint account, which is the most problematic area of the local government, uh, and then uh, establishment, uh, structure, composition, and the rest of the local government, which is all a mirage. Next slide. Yeah, please, I expect the students to also be able to look at this and then ask questions much later, just like, just like, uh, just as I'm talking. Uh, but it's very important to understand that the structure of local government 
uh, in every country has its own history. In the case of Nigeria, with the colonization of Nigeria, with the amalgamation of Nigeria in 1914, the Northern and Southern Protectorate, we have the local government in terms of the native there are many people that uh recording the excesses of the local local government uh system president uh uh, uh, uh secretary or as we chairman he wrote so much on the excesses of the local government Um, so the native fifty four to nineteen sixty, the local government was under the native authority. Now, by nineteen seventy, after the civil war, it has to be distorted because the that direction of Nigeria now changed. It is how to get a united country called Nigeria. instead of just a, a, a mirage, instead of just a, having a native authority. So you can see Uh, am I audible now? Am, am I audible now? Yes, Hello? you are audible now. Yes, yes, Sorry, you can my hear. My network is uh, fluctuating. Uh, so as I was trying to explain to you, uh, by 1970, the native authority system has to be distorted because of the military rule. And then not just because of the military rule, because outcome of the three-year uh, civil war in Nigeria and the emergence of petroleum, makes it that the local government, the extreme centralization of public resources and management started at that time. And as such, resources and responsibilities of the local government were taken away from the local government. Next slide. Uh, thank you for making it bigger. Ah, oh, okay. Next slide, okay. What is happening, Awesome. So by 1976, can you make the slide more bigger? By 1976, make it as presentation mode. Yeah, thank you, yeah. By 1976, there was another reform that united all the local government system in philosophy, structure, staffing, and functions with definite objective that as stated, as usual, service delivery, mobilization of human and material resources through participation, Look at that keyword there, through participation, because through all this discussion, we are, we'll be talking about participation, devolution, delegating to local representatives, which is not a reality in, in, in the present Nigerian context. Next slide. Good. So from 1988, each local government was to have four operational, or what we call line departments. That's works, education, health, agri. And then to have two service departments, that is personal management and finance and planning. Now, some local government have legal and research and planning department nowadays. So in 1980, there was also the creation of the office of the creation of the office of uh, uh, the local government auditor. And then there's also the transfer of, you see. Mark you very much, mark it very much. 1988, there was a creation of the Office of the Local Government Auditor. So when we come to talk of the corruption at the local government, since 1988, we have a, an auditor. So what is happening? Then the transfer of primary education and primary health care happens in 1990, which is also one of the main problems of local government today. Next slide. 
Uh, thank you very much. From 1989 to 1993, the local government operation changed to presidential. I know we are operating parliamentary before. Now it comes to presidential. Uh, from presidential, the chief executive has the power to, is an executive in short, power over revenue and expenditure and the rest of the accounting officer. Next slide. Then from 1979, the constitution spelled out functions and responsibility of the local government in three categories. The area they have full responsibility, the area they share responsibility with the higher level of government, the area of responsibility that they share within the state and federal government. Now, this is the beginning of the loss of freedom of the local government, as we shall come to see later. Next slide. Now, 1999 Constitution amended, especially Section 162, provided that the amount standing to credit of local government in the federation amount should be allocated to the state for the benefit of the local government, but on such terms and in such manner as may be prescribed by the National Assembly. This is the loss of freedom or autonomy for the local government in terms of what? Credit to the local government from the federation account. Then it, that means it empowers the local the state assembly to fix any proportion of the state internally generated revenue as a share to the local government, in which it has been fixed in some state 5%, some state 10% of the internally generated revenue, the local government, but not being remitted. Next slide. And they created the state joint local government account. Then, but then the same constitution acknowledge the powers of the local government council. Next slide. But it acknowledge the powers of the local government council, but it does not give them the, uh, uh, the ability to function. Because in the structure, you have the chairman, the vice chairman, secretary, councillors, supervisory councillor, and the rest, and then you have the different departments. This is structure at the local government. And uh, next slide. Ah, thank you very much. In the structure of the local government, instead of allowing already this, already the constitution has made the local government to be infunctional, then it now added another structure again, which made the make the local government not to be functional by creating Ministry of Local Government Affairs. And the major function is control of the local government. It inspects local government in their administration and financial management. It arranges the state joint allocation fund committee meeting. Then the second one is the local government service board that is responsible for personal, personal matters of the unified local government service from level 07 to above. Then it has state auditor general for local government responsible for auditing of accounts of the local government periodically to ensure the existence and operation of the audit alarm committee for local government at the state level. And then it has state and local government staff pension bureau. Next slide. Now, the local government in part of its structure is that it has a council that is meant to make law and then debate and approve and even amend local a local government annual budget, but subject to chairman's veto, which could be override by two third majority of the council, which has never been done anyway. Next slide. Now, these are also the remaining function of the local government council. But as we shall come to see, who are the councillors that have the capacity to do all this? Because mostly the people that are, elect, that are elected as councillors or appointed as councillors are people that don't have capacity, competence, capability in implementing this uh, beautiful uh, programs of the local government council. Next slide. And then you see 
By and large, the local government is supposed to inculcate positive citizenship attitude of self-control, community responsibility, and identity. But to what extent do we feel the impact of the local government in our various community? They are also to support, they are supposed to provide basic community service and even attract and generate economic activities. Well, not in my local government, maybe your local government. And then promote democracy of, yes, they promote democracy of the ruling party, obviously. And they increase citizenship participation and governance, which is still a mirage. Next slide. Then the, the local government structure also makes it possible to have what you call committee system at the local government level. Now you should understand that this committee system, the ones that I mentioned here, are what you call statutory committees. Now, there are other committees that have been created that are not included here because of the exigency of the time security problem, flood and environmental and climate issues, migration and immigration, uh, youth restiveness, and the rest of them. So other committees have been set up by different local governments to solve these uh, problems that I've mentioned and, uh, uh, just now. Next slide. Now it also also it also has socioeconomic functions, which are, I, 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 you you should know that uh, it is not being functional because uh, uh, where in people go and vandalize uh, local government property and even burn it down because of political reason, then how can the local government supervise projects and implementation in time? And then to some extent they do it in some places, especially if the if the contractors have interest in the project. Next slide. Then this is the area that local government is very, very good in. Because the non-governmental organizations like uh, electoral college, right, come in for advocacy at the local government level. And they know that you cannot come empty handed. So, there is always, they, they always like enlightenment campaign on government efforts and programs, such as immunization, uh, kick out malaria, kick out polio. But when it comes to uh, political literacy, they don't, they don't want to hear that, right? Even when you say they encourage political, they encourage community development in order to embark on self-help. Every local government is supposed to have uh, an amount is set down for community development association, but they don't give it out. Most of the local government don't even have adult education classes because even the primary school under them is not even functional or they are not being able to manage the primary schools. If you walk around, you see blow roof and the rest of that. And even when the state government is constructing schools, you are constructing buildings, that's growth. Then the development of the teachers is not taken into cognizance. In short, in some state like Kaduna State, they, they sack this set of teachers today, they employed another one, they remain for six months without payment. When they want to complain, they give them two months and they tell them, we are going to pay you, and then no appointment letter or no confirmation and the rest of them. So the primary school and the rest of them, just another thing is, because it's handled by the state government instead of the local government. Next slide. I thank you very much. Yes, they encourage the, pro the maintenance of peace and harmony to the extent that it does not jeopardize their own interests. And that is why the peace committee is very functional. It meets regularly. And then why it meets regularly is obviously because of uh, also the honorarium of the members. So if you attend the meeting, you'll be given. Uh, but after then, what responsibility do you have in most cases, there is nothing. Yes, they settle little, little dispute between individuals 
and the health of them. But it is not the local government that draws that, rather it is the community leaders and the, the different stakeholders and the paramount leaders that do that. Next slide. Most importantly, it has some critical stakeholders. And this is where I have a problem with the local government. Because in every local government, you have senior retired military personnel and other officers and staff, senior retired public and civil servants, businessmen and women, prominent politicians. But if you ask them, about the local government. Some of them have never visited the local government since they collected their indignation almost 30 to 40 years ago. They have not been to the local government again. So but these are people that are supposed to be custodian of community identity and crucial to the maintenance of law and order and mobilization of the people for government program. But to, the, to what extent they are performing their duty is, a pro, is something that is questionable. And that is why I, I also want to suggest to the Electoral College, I think it's also time for us to uh, move ahead and start finding out some of these uh, uh, stakeholders, to what extent are they even aware of their role at the local government level. Next slide. Now, in terms of revenue, in terms of revenue, I'm very I'm fast because I want us to do the discussion. In terms of revenue, I'm very happy with Lagos State Government. By 2010 July 12, it passed and approved levies for local government council and local council development areas into law. Now, what it does has been copied by almost all the state in the federation. That means it categorized the taxation level of the local government and the levies into four. Highly urbanized communities, urbanized communities, semi-urbanized communities, and rural communities. Now, this, this is why Lagos State Government has been the highest revenue generator in Nigeria because of this law. And it has, I, I think, I'm not so sure whether the law has been uh, amended over the years. I, I'll confirm. Next slide. So other local governments that could not be able to get this done are having problem. And that is the problem of lack of performance. And you can see, this is where the discussion is. To what extent is the fictive and cumbersome structure of the local government a, a reason for its non-performance? Because it has Ministry of Local Government Affairs it has this and that, it has this and that, that. Then what is the function of the local government itself? And then the local government cannot enforce certain bylaws because it doesn't even have the capacity, the low caliber and poorly step staff and even low administrative efficiency and corruption and even in the inadequate finance and in the adequate power of enforcement that to make the local government to become very effective. If you go to the local government, in Nigeria today, the local government that can boast of a, 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 somebody that has a statistician that's working in the planning department, you can count on your fingertips. And even a medical doctor who is having one of the primary health care, you can be sure that it's going to be a equivalent task, right? So, not even talk of the level of the capacity of uh, the caliber of uh, the staffs in the local government because they are poorly paid. Their salary is less than that of the state government. Next slide. So who prefer to work in the local government? Why in the actual sense, the salary is less than that of uh, uh, a staff at the uh, state and even federal level? Okay, again, another commendable aspect is the Nigerian Financial Intelligence Unit that issues guidelines against overpowering and overbearing influence of state government in the administration of local government's monthly allocation. This guideline reduced cash withdrawal from the local government account to 500,000 daily. But it was taken to court after a lot of debate and the rest of them uh, 
the national, the Nigerian Financial Intelligence Unit won the struggle, but it has not given the local government autonomy up to now. Next slide. Next slide. Thank you very much. Okay, as I was saying, the local government, they, they went to court and then clearly the judge says it is clear from the provision of the act and then section O of the act, the unit has the power to make the guidelines. So there is nothing wrong or unconstitutional about the guidelines and they did not resolve the power of the plaintiff. That was the judgment delivered uh, in the court. Next slide. But you see, court judgment are always very <laughs> funny, right? Now, in, 19, in March 2022, the National Assembly passed a law abolishing the state joint local government account and providing for a special account where local government allocation can be paid. It can suit to, uh, to have its own account, each state to pay into local government account and the rest. However, since the bill is seek to amend, since the bill cannot be passed without the amendment of the constitution, it did not receive the approval of at least 24 state house of assemblies. So that is the end of the local government autonomy by March 2022, because the, the bill did not scale through. Because even if the bill scale, the constitution has to be amended. And it did not get the 24, well, at least 24 state house of assembly out of taxes did not consent to it. Next slide. Now you can see now clearly that uh, though earlier on I talked about the challenges uh, or the reason why the local government is not functioning. But then let me be a bit detailed here. The detail here is that the local government also have the problem of corruption. This corruption is in the little aspect that they are given the power to function. They have the inflation of prices of both items, of our estimation of project costs, ghost worker syndrome, awarding of contract and subsequent abandonment of the contract, outright payment of huge sum of money to political godfathers. That's what is the challenges of local government in terms of corruption. Next slide. And these are documented issues. They are, docu they are doc documented issues that everybody knows about them. Now, in conclusion, local government all over the world have a decentralized structure with far richer responsibilities and powers to, uh, to exercise. And the Nigerian constitution has clearly delineated the power, the constitutional rules and powers of the local government, but full of contradiction. The local government are totally subordinated, sub, they are totally subjugated to the state government excessive control and manipulation. And therefore the local government lack the autonomy to exercise their power and fiscal responsibility. Another structure that is, uh, 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 that's my conclusion. Another structure that I also want to make you understand is we have the Algon. The Algon is the mark piece of uh, local government chairman of the world uh, of Nigeria that are supposed to also campaign for local government autonomy, but unfortunately they are not doing it. Rather, it is the local government workers under the Nolge that are uh, championing that cause and for some time now, the present leadership of Nolge is not uh, very forceful. Then one other aspect that I did not capture quickly please, before we start the discuss is that fair government in its wisdom established, uh, designate three universities in Nigeria so as to train local government staff and then monitor the performance of local government. And those universities are University of Nsuka, University of Ife and Ahmed Bello Universities area. Now they are mandated, in short, they have a budget under the intergovernmental relations to be in charge of local government affairs. But unfortunately, since Jonathan's, uh, since uh, before Jonathan, up to now, those universities have not been able, have not been able to have any meetings. Only last month that the intergovernmental relations remembered. Uh, that they, are, that is a response, they have a responsibility with the university. So they have come looking for the university so that that relationship will be revived. We hope that it is going to be revived for the better. 
Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity, uh, my ED and other members. But then I recommended, so I made some little recommendation that if you want to have a vibrant local government, then the democratic and development oriented local government, then more developmental responsibility should be devolved to the local government. That means the state government should be more responsible and responsive to the needs of the aspiration of the local government so that they can give them more power so that they can be able to do something. Then there won't be the promotion of intersectoral leakages between agriculture, local rule, it's not law, sorry, uh, that's, there's a mistake there. Local law, uh, raw material, local skill and technology, and then there must be the scale down of poverty, at least by half, in all local government planning and budgeting that. But when you get the correct uh, capable answer to do the local government planning and budgeting. Next slide. Then the involvement, that's the aspect of participation, involvement of the local people into uh, local affairs and the rest of them, promotion of lo groups and, lo and lo local organization so as to increase their bargaining power, organization and formation of cooperatives and co community-based organizations. These are all aspects of the local government, but it's not been uh, done. And then the participation of rural women in uh, development process has to be spearheaded by the local government. Next slide. I will keep on talking. Next slide. There must be a system of incremental budgeting instead of traditional budgeting. Then good governance must be made. Then the bill seeking, uh, seeking to amend the constitution has to be revisited again. And then the scrapping of the state joint local government account must be a must. And then also the scrapping of the state independent electoral commission must also take place to make the local government more wow. independent. Next slide. Thank you very much. Go back to the first slide so that we can now start the discussion. Thank you very much. I raised my case and then I expect this. Okay, God, uh, who is the moderator? Yeah, thank you so much, um, doctor. Um, so we are going to take questions now. And I don't know how you want it to be, whether it's going to be suggestions first, like um, comments, uh, observations, or questions first before, um, you know, the... It's better the we ask the question first, so that in case network throws me out, I, can, I, I will have answered uh, most of the question and then the discussion will continue offline. All right, all right, all right. That's wonderful. So, guys, if you have a question you want to ask, quickly raise your hand. I'm going to call you guys according to how you raise your hand, okay? Um, then ask you to unmute your mic and ask your questions. Then if for any reason maybe you are in a place where there is noise and you don't want to disturb the group, you can just drop the question on the chat. I'll read it out for Prof to answer it from there. Right? Okay, so I I'm going to go first to Joshua. Joshua, can you unmute yourself and ask a question please just go straight to the point right we, we don't have so much time we don't have all the time with us so just go straight to the point ask the question then we are coming to the conversation section as well joshua uh, hello uh, prof good evening sir Oh, thank you. Good evening. Thank you for, it's been a, a wonderful class so far and it's been an amazing session. So my question is just a very simple one. Uh, those people, when you talk about local governments, uh, I I went through, I was very attentive all, all, all through your class and I noticed you spoke about the fact that they are underfunded which is true. And I'm aware that uh, most of those governors have refused to sign the local government autonomy uh, of lately. So, but uh, for instance, I am from Kogi State, though I'm not based there, but I do know that uh, recently I spoke to my brother 
And he told me that the governor of Kogi State, that he said stuff like why he doesn't pay local government workers is that uh, they do nothing there. And truly, when you look at the local government settings in Nigeria, they are really, I wouldn't really want to call them idle set of people. But what exactly do they do there that warrants them being paid, sir? This is uh, uh, thank you very opinion. much. Let me uh, thank you very much. Let me quickly answer you. You see, when you say somebody is not doing something, right? It's just like asking, it's just like asking a, a, a housewife, housewife, you are not doing your work. Why, in the actual sense, you allow the work to be done by the nanny? <laughs> so, what are you doing? You have already seized her responsibility and given it to the, the house help. So what else do you want her to do? Instead of to spend hours chatting and then uh, painting her face. I'm sorry you for using that example. So what I'm saying is that the state government and the federal government have already removed everything from the local government. For instance, now, tell your brother to go to the Department of Works at the local government. He will see heavy equipments that are there, but the contract is given to a contractor outside. Why you have electrician in the local government, you have an engineer in the local government, you have a town planner in the local government, but you deny him the ability to work because you have given that work to a contractor. So how do you want him to work? The only people that are very hardworking in the local government, which I, 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 I am a testimony to, are those in the finance and administration because that's where the whole thing is. And then those in the social and education, uh, so, uh, education and social work. Because when somebody throw a baby away, they'll call, him, they'll call them to come and pick it. But apart from that, they have rendered, and then when somebody takes the local government to court, then it is then that the legal department becomes functional. So they have already resolved, uh, resolved everything from the local government. So what are they going to do? When you talk of agri, they no, more, they no more distribute fertilizers. You have extension workers in the local government, but they are no more involved in anything concerning agri. So what do you want them to do? Obviously, they will be redundant. So he's just begging the question. He's supposed to know better. The, the governor, he's supposed to know better. And because he's among the governors that, is, uh, that did not give the local government, uh, he did not sign the bill for the local government authority. Next question, please. All right, thank you so much, Prof. Um, Josh, I, I hope your question was answered. Um, so we'll go to Babatunde. Babatunde, I've asked you to unmute. You can just go straight to the point and ask the question. Thank you. All right. Um, good evening, everyone. Good evening, Doc. So thank you so much for this opportunity. Um, I just want to talk, just get your own idea, your own view on community policing, because that is a major function, a major issue concerning the local government and the states and this thing, because we know that community policing has been a very major issue. So what's your take on that, sir? Thank you very much, sir. Uh, thank you very much. I remember being a member of the poli uh, police uh, community relations committee in my local government. But one time like that, we woke up in the morning and then they, uh, we are told that uh, the new DG, and the new ID, not this one anyway, has brought out new rules and regulations that even those, that, those of us that are in that committee, we have to pay some, I think at least 5,000 or 10,000 for our ID card. So I, I, now this, I now know that there is something wrong since I have to pay 5,000 to serve my own or 10,000 for my ID card to serve my community. Right? It's a very noble idea. In short, I wrote, I wrote a paper some years ago campaigning on community policy. And then uh, this present IG, when this present uh, chairman of the Police Service Commission, Arinze, when he was the IG, he tried as much as possible so as that idea of community policing could materialize. But unfortunately, Nigeria, like other third world countries, Nobody wants people to be educated. Everybody wants to be in ignorance so that they can continue to dominate them. Because 
As a member of the police community relations committee, our responsibility is to educate the people to know the law and to know the limit of the police in terms of their excesses and the rest of the and we are to report. But then nobody is happy for you to know that. And because of that, the whole idea was scopal. And that's exactly what is happening. If you allow the police, you, you can remember in the case of Kano State, and that is why we are saying that there should be no state police. When uh, Ganduje was in government, the first thing was, he denied Senator Konkoso of coming back home. And imagine he does not even have state police or at his own disposal then, but he denied him coming home. But imagine what will have happened if he has state police at his own disposal. Maybe he will have even sent people to Abuja, his state police to go and arrest him in Abuja and bring him naked into uh, Kano. So those are the reasons why we are very skeptical about uh, this. Uh, uh, police, uh, state police, and the rest of them, because of the excesses that will be used by the executive in order to settle political uh, uh, score. But generally, the idea of the state police, uh, the, the police uh, relation, is a very good uh, idea. But the implementation is always a problem, which is just like any other program in Nigeria. Implementation, implementation is always a problem. Thank you. Thank you so much. Prof. Um, so I'm going to read some questions from the chat, then I'm, I'll, I'll come back to the people that they answer. Right, right, right. Yeah, there are two questions here that, that really looks opposite, but I think they're talking about almost something. The first one is from Ahmadine. Say, why should state independent electoral commissions be scrapped? And the second one, which I would love you to answer them together, is from Abel Daniel, he said, my question is to escape the trend of having governors impose their studies as chairman of the local governments in their states using the state independent electoral commission. How do we get the independent national electoral commission, that's INEC, to conduct LG elections across the 774 LGAs? What's the process to go about it? Hello, Prof. Are you there with me? Yeah, I'm, I'm my network, uh, as I said earlier. Okay, so let me start with the first. Uh, the, I didn't get the second one, but let me start with the first one. Why I'm advocating for the scrubbing of the State Independent Electoral Commission is that look at even the federal, uh, the, 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 the ANEC, the problem it is having. In the whole of Nigeria, have you ever seen any state that the State Electoral Commission organized local government election and the ruling party did not win all the seats? In short, totally all the seats is won. That means there is something wrong. Because there cannot be, like in my own area, we are PRP, right? We voted PRP, our candidate. But we didn't get that candidate's uh, uh, he did not win the election. So what are you telling me? So I'm advocating not just for the scrubbing of the State Electoral Commission for many reasons, but also even the need for reorganizing even the INEC itself. But then, you know, it cannot be possible if the politicians do not allow it to be possible. And he who owns the piper, he takes the two. Thank you. I didn't get the second question. All right, I'm going to ask the second question. I'm going to read it again. Um, but then, Amadin, I hope um, you are clear now why the CX should be scrapped. Like, if possible, this week it should be scrapped. Um, so this question is from Daniel. He said, my question is to escape the trend of having governors impose their stooges as chairman of local governments in their states using the State Independent Electoral Commission. How do we get the Independent National Electoral Commission, INEC, to conduct LG elections across the 774 LGAs. Watch the process to go about it from that. Just like, just like the states, just like the federal elections, the federal election is not unison in all the states. There's always a staggered election. For example, Kodi's election is coming up very soon. And then other elections in other states are also coming up very soon. But you see, the state government have, according to the constitution, the, the local government 
supposed to have a tenure. But then the state government scuffled that tenure and then appoints sole administrators. And when they appoint sole administrators, they now say elections should take place. And when they say elections should take place, the sole administrators, I'd want to manage the election with the state independent electoral commission because they I'd want to take care of the logistics with the election. So how do you expect? Eh? So even that is why I say, even when I'm advocating that the national and should take over local government election, but I put a caveat. I said, even the national ANEC must have to be cleared, must have to be sweep. That there should be a clean, there should be a sweeping in that place because of the output, because of the process and the procedure of conducting 2023 election. Thank you. Thank you very much, Prof. Daniel, I hope you, you are clear now. So I'm going to come back to the guys. Their hands are up. Um, someone's hand was up before, I don't know, from Akwaibo. I remember the name was from Akwaibo. I don't know. Your hands down. But then let's go with Silas. Silas Agadu, I've asked you to admit. So just go straight to the point because we don't have all the time. Thank you. Okay. Um, good evening. I hope you can hear me clearly. Um, yes. Prof, I wanted to ask. I wanted to ask: Do the local governments still have um, powers over lands? Because um, I don't know if the state government has taken over the control of lands. Because I know it's the local government that has control of lands in 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 this country over the years. So I wanted to know if it's still like that or it has changed. You you should go and ask them. They don't have anything to do with land. Like in my own state, Karuna State, uh, you have to go to the, the just like you have the GBs in uh, all the other states. The land, the certificate of occupancy is given by the, by the state government. And, uh, and even if you have your house, the state government, if, it's, if you are not in good terms with them, they can revoke your uh, certificate of occupancy. And that is why some of us at times are very careful because uh, we can uh, we can now criticize the federal government more than we criticize the state government because even though so our land will be the COO of the alarm I'm sorry maybe <laughs> revoked. So in short, your answer the answer is that local government don't have much powers over the issue of uh, uh, land. Uh, somebody write in the chat, can the federal government do anything about this? The federal government cannot do anything about the local government, the situation of the local government, because the federal government is also in the same uh, party with the state government. And that is why things are not happening the way they should happen. You show the, the federal government, the state government are advocating for more allocation. And they are advocate, they are campaigning that the amount due to local government should be reduced so that it can be added to them, right? The federal government is not willing to reduce its own amount, and it has the idea of supporting, kind of finding a way of supporting the uh, state government so that they can reduce the share of the local government so that they can add to them. So uh, it's, it's really a, a big challenge. Mm -hmm. Because see who owns the piper, they change the tune. And when power is very sweet for uh, generally uh, Nigerians, and when they get it, they don't want to leave it. Thank yes, you. Yes. Yeah, um, okay. Um, so uh, if if someone has asked the question you wanted to ask, please, you can bring down your hand, okay? Because you have a lot of questions, both on the chat and a lot of people whose hands are up, so that we can be able to, you know, get all the questions within the time that we have. So I'm going to call Udo first. Ekomobong, Eko please forgive me if I didn't pronounce the name very well. I've asked you to omit. Please, straight to the point. All right. Uh, good evening, Prof. Thank you very much for the lecture. My question goes thus. The president had signed a deal uh, in granting financial autonomy to the local government. But uh, uh, re reality has it that most of the state houses of assembly and most of the local government chairmen rejected that deal. So my question is, what then is the future of the local government concerning financial autonomy? That's very good. 
the future is we all have to continue campaigning for that autonomy. Till when we when the when we have uh, the, the listening ear, maybe uh, Siwaju will have the listening ear to convince the state government. But you see, I told you that the problem is not with the federal government. The federal government would prefer to have its own money. And I said, the local government, the state government cannot leave. It's just like uh, you telling your breadwinner that, please, I'm not going to interact with you again. Is that not suicide? The, the local government are the breadwinners of the uh, state government because the allocation, it is from the allocation. I felt, I, I, because of time, I didn't tell you, there is what we call a judicial deduction from the local government. They deduct the traditional rulers, uh, is it 5% or 10% from the local government? They deduct primary school and uh, primary health care from the local government. Anywhere you see military or police formation or this paramilitary, there are certain amount deducted from the local government account to maintain them, right? Even the NYC was also campaigning that they should be given that uh, uh, part of that legacy. So you can see those are deductions that state government cannot, uh, they are deductions that the state government is supposed to foot the bill for, but they will not foot the bill. So it's more easier for them to now do that deduction from the local government account. And then that joint account empowered the state government to have what you call joint economy planning. So in joint economy planning, the state will contribute 40%. Then the local government will contribute 60%. And then the state will claim, will claim the project. And that's what is happening. And the money is removed from source. So that's, that's the problem with the local government. So we must keep on advocating that the autonomy must be there. Thank you so much, Prof. Um, yeah, Ubong, you. I hope your question was answered. So Prof, I'm going to read yes, um, questions from the chat right now. Um, the next question we have here is, does sole administrator exist in the constitution from Ayuba Dauda? <laughs> you can see it's not there in the constitution. There's nowhere in the constitution you have a sole administrator. But it is more easier to appoint sole administrator than to appoint us to conduct uh, election. Because the sole administrator is appointed, he must be a loyalist of the governor or the loyalist of the party in power. And as such, he must dance to the tune of the party in power, not only the sole administrator at the local government level, but also the sole administrator at the local, at the what you call local area council. You know, all the state have local government council, then they have local area council they created. And in Kaduna State, it went further to have what is called a mayor system. Uh, a mayor system. So some group of local government are under one mayor who has an office in this, in the local government headquarters or as an office somewhere else. So you can see deduction is done again to take care of the local government mayor and his staff, right? So it is not based on any uh, 1999 constitutional amendment. It's just the, the whims and crapaces of uh, uh, whoever is uh, in power. All right, thank you so much, Prof. Um, Dauda, I hope your question is answered now. Um, so I'm going to read the next question from the chat here, um, from Pamela. He said, thank you, sir, good evening. Um, how do we set to the concerns of corruptions and issues relating to Godfatherism's payback? Even the EFCC and ICPSC have not been able to settle corruption. So maybe are you trying to say that we should get a a local EFCC and ICPC at the local government level. There is no need, as far as I'm concerned, there is no need. Because you remember I said they have uh, local government auditors. They have local government inspectors who are supposed to uh, monitor all, all of this. But when they are not functional, then what else do we do? It's a field day. And moreover, I said earlier on, I mentioned some of the departments that are more functional. 
Just like the governor of Kogi said, they are not working. Yeah, I quite agree they are not working because you usurp their power and then give contractors and consultants to do it. So obviously, how can they work? So the issue of corruption is more than just what you think at the local government level. It is very, very serious. And uh, we all have to get up and do advocacy and sensitization and the rest of them so that people can be able to realize that the local government is not a, your grandfather's farm where you just go and inherit it and then uh, take all the goodies out of the land and then leave uh, the bad things out of the land. Sorry for using that language. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Prof. Um, Pamela, I hope your question was answered. Um, so I'm going to come back to the guys who are uh, up. Nelson, you are next. Please stretch the point. I've asked you to omit. Nelson Atabo. Go ahead. Um, thank you very much, sir. Um, thank you very much, um, Professor, sir. Hope everyone can, can hear me. Yeah, loud and clear. We can hear you. Okay, thank you very, very much. Um, I think, um, the, like, like the prof said, the local government is the closest um, arm of government to people, and um, that is a fact. But um, since that in Nigeria, um, that is not really the reality that we are being, that we are facing. Um, in fact, uh, I live in a state, uh, those states where um, the state government has refused to actually say, to actually organize an local government. Okay, and um, that has been that has been a, the the fact that the state government has use the local government to actually have an election has been a pain in the in the issue of governance in, in those states as we talk about as, as currently as we, we are in now. So now during the, the process where um, the prof was talking talking uh, was giving this lecture, we mentioned that the United States Constitution gave um the gave it gave brought gave gave powers to certain um agencies called the Ministry of Local Government to actually checkmate the activities of local government and also checkmate the activities so you have very influences of the state over the local government. So, sir, if we have the national constitution creating such a ministry, why is it that we have these issues of local government not performing very, very well, and city government having overbearing influences on the state? And this ministry, which is in charge of technology, all these activities, technology, all these evil forces that the state is having over the local government, why is it that this um, ministry has not technically all these things and resolved these issues on ground? Thank you, sir. The ministry is the child of the state government. And anybody who runs contrary to his father will have to face the consequence. So they are being directed, just like any other civil servant, civil servant. You are directed to do this. And if you don't do it, the next day you see your transfer letter to Siberia or Ukraine. And that's if you're lucky enough to lose your job. So that's just the issue. So they are also appendix of the state government. So they cannot do more than what they are told to do. Period. So wow. can we have a discussion? Can we somebody react and then let's see what we can do quickly? Oh, okay. Uh, Prof, I think there are still many questions. About five persons are still waiting in the queue to answer their questions. Uh, okay, and again, let, quickly, please, let them ask the question. I'll be more faster again. Yeah, thank you so much. I was going to say that. Um, so, um, um, Sunday, Timothy, please, I've asked you to unmute. Just go straight to the point, right? Straight to the point. Thank you. Good evening, Prof. Thank you. Um, my, question, my question is, why is it that the FCT is not treated as a state as stipulated in the constitution of Nigeria. That's my number one. My second, please, can you tell us more about the functions of councillors in the area councils? Because, like, okay. I'm, I'm okay. using the functions. Okay, the FCT has been recognized as area council in the constitution. That's why it is like that. And it is supposed to operate as a mayor. But then, you know, the he who owns the Piper details the truth. That is why it's supposed to have a, a mayor system, but it has not been converted fully into a mayor system. So it is, you know, at the state level, the local government is under the Ministry of Local Government. Why at the, at the, uh, at the Abuja level, at the FCT level, it is under the FCT minister and the other organs in the ministry. So you can see, it's the same thing. Then what's the other question? 
the role of the councillors. The role of the councillor is just like the role of the any member of assembly legislation. But do they have the capacity to do their live, live legislation? That's a question uh, we need to find out. And that's why they are not uh, legislating anything. Next question, please. All right, thank you, Prof. Um, said look, said look, go ahead and ask a question now, please. Okay, good evening, sir. So my question is, why do we still have 774 local government even after Bakasi have been handed over to Cameroon back in sometimes 2006? That is a very good question. But Bakasi was not a local government. That's what you don't know. It was part of a local government. <laughs> I hope you understand. And that is why that area has always been under attack. Because whenever they have a problem among themselves, they are you know, part of Bakasi is in Cameroon, while the other part is in Nigeria. So whenever they have a problem there, those that are in Cameroon always run back into Nigeria. Then the Cameroonian soldiers also run into Nigeria to come and uh, attack them. So it's a recurring desma. And the Australian government and the local governments there, and the state government has to do something about it. Next question. Ezekiel, I've asked you to me please straight to the point okay all right um thank you so much i hope you can hear me loud and clear um right. so yes good evening thank you so much professor for uh, this great exposition uh so am i the answer to my question uh, perhaps will just be an addition to your answer to um <clears throat> ubong's question and it's on the issue of autonomy um, I personally believe that um, Lagos, I mean, uh, local government autonomy is one of the fundamental um, factors that we need for the, the um, survival of democracy in Nigeria. But then this has been talked over, you know, many years. So my question is, what exactly is, is it like? If there is a procedure or if there is a, should I say, um, a roadmap, to achieving true autonomy for local governments in Nigeria. Could you just shed light on some of the things we need to understand if that is going to happen, like what the procedure is going to be like so that we can know exactly what you know, we are pursuing in terms of uh, active particip participation for citizens? Thank you, sir. Okay, there is internal and external factors. The internal factor is the capacity, the competency, the capability of the local government staff again to pursue that agenda. Then secondly, again, the external factor is has been set in motion. We've gotten the view, we've gotten the bill up to the Labour uh, Assembly. Now what remains is a constitutional amendment. So we now have to go back to the drawing board again. So, but as we are as you are struggling for the autonomy, the local government staffs or those in charge of local government must also be able to show sense of uh, capacity. Why do I say so? When during the Babangida regime, he allowed money to be taken to the local government, directly into the local government account. Many local government chairman ran away with the money. So and that is why that autonomy was removed. So how are we sure now that if we grant you financial autonomy or fiscal autonomy, you will not run away with our money? Especially that we, our borders are porous. We don't have border. Anybody can just jump into Cameroon and then from anywhere, from those part, that angle. Somebody on the Northeast can just jump into Chad and Niger. Somebody from the Northwest can just jump into Niger. Somebody from the Southwest can just jump into uh, Benin Republic and Togo with Amen. Eh? And then somebody from the ocean can also decide to board any ship and then disappear with Amen. So, what are you saying? So, this is the same issue of the egg and chicken argument. So, we have to do more advocacy to get the result. And done. Thank you. Thank you, Prof. Um, Ola Tumbosun. Sorry if I murdered your name. So I've asked you to me. Ola Tumbosun. 
Oh, sorry. Um, it was a mistaken under. I'm comfortable with the discussion going on. Thank you, sir. All right, thank you so much. So, Farid, you are the last person. Farid. Okay, can you hear me? Loud and clear. Okay, so um, thank you, Pro, for your presentation. I was really trying to follow everything. I enjoyed it, but while I was trying to follow it, people like me, that I'm a, when it comes to politics, I'm a complete novice. It's as if I'm learning a new language here. So what I want to ask is, when I'm trying to go through your presentation after this um, Zoom call, like what sources can I, aside from going on the, the internet to search for the terminologies you use and the constitution and the local government, what sources can I, you know, use to read along with your presentation? Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, you have gone through a, a very important question because most at times our Zoom presentation, we don't uh, put uh, the sources of our material, but now you have given me a very big challenge that I will now go back and then insert all the necessary, uh, all the necessary references so that, as in short, your your observation is well noted, and I believe the electoral college will also notice so that other presenters can also be able to give uh, uh, the sources of their. Uh, presentation. Thank you very much, Farid, for that observation. And uh, I, I would maybe if you contact the Electoral College, uh, they can con they can contact me so that I can put in some of these and uh, send across together with the slide, but not within the shortest possible time because I'm a bit busy. I'm in the field. I will not be back till maybe the next two three weeks. I'm going to so many twenty five villages. So you can see I'm very occupied. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much, um, Prof. Um, and I think um, they can also follow you on social media. You are very active on Twitter and other social media handles. So you can just check him up and you can follow his work and maybe build more connections. I've gone through most of the questions in the chat and I think it's, it's it, Prof has answered all the questions, you know, in the course of answering the other questions that I was asked. So I don't know, Prof, whether you can set the tune for the discussion or whether we we'll draw the conclusion from here. So everything is in your hand. Or the students. No, 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 let you, you are the moderator. So go ahead, whatever you want. Uh, if uh, somebody has, like the fiery the, uh, observation is very valid. Uh, so if, he, uh, if other people have also other valid observation, is you give them the chance to air their views. Uh, if they have any disagreement, then they can also uh, try to uh, say it. Like I know that there are somebody in the in the in the, in the who is online now, uh, who I know is very also very vibrant in terms of local government issue. He decided to keep quiet. Uh, Mr. Goji, I don't know that he's still online. Uh, I don't know. Maybe if you give him an opportunity, he may say something. I can, okay, I cannot see him again. So you is left for you, this, this at your discretion. All right, thank you, Prof. Um, guys, I don't know, do, do you have observations? Do you have comments you want to make? Um, for me, this is a very interesting topic and I think it's something that we really need to pay more attention to and commit more energy. Um, seriously, even the citizens really do not understand the power they have to influence most of the things that we're talking about. Like someone okay, asks- the, the, the Goji is around. The Goji is around, oh, oh. Yusuf Goji. Okay, Yusuf Goji, uh, I'm, I'm asking you to unmute yourself right now. Thank you. You can go ahead. All right, good evening, everyone. Good yeah, evening. Good yes, um, thank you very much, Prof. Um, I actually did not want to say anything after Prof had spoken, um, but since he had uh, encouraged me to do that, I will follow his footsteps. But um, just to say that um, 
from our own experience, because I'm also here in Kaduna, um, we have seen a lot of reforms at the local government level, um, much better than most states um, in Nigeria. However, the biggest hindrance for local government administration remains the local government financial and administrative autonomy. And um, one component of it is that we have consistently accused the state government of not wanting the local government autonomy, and rightly so. But um, from our experience, um, we have also understood that the state members of the state houses of assembly are not buying into local government autonomy for the simple reason um, that one, most of them, um, the local system uh, is a rent seeking system for them because they approve local government. Every member for a local government to get its budget approved, you have to bribe your member. And equally, some local government place their uh, house of uh, state house of assembly members on monthly allowances. And that is um, from the financial angle. Then from the political angle, um, these state assembly members don't want autonomy for local government because they don't want local government chairman to have more political powers to influence who becomes member and what have you. So I just want us to also turn our satellite to the role of the state houses of assembly because um, they are the ones that would sign the resolution that is needed to amend the constitution, not even the governor. The governor uh, has indirect control, but they are the key deciders of whether this autonomy um, would have a play, would come to reality or not. So I think one of the things we can do going forward, if really we want this autonomy to happen, is begin to say, um, probably by the next election, we should sign social contract with this House of Assembly members so that when this bill is sent to them for ratification, it is a prerequisite for us re-electing them that they must sign to this bill. So it's easier for us to hold them accountable when we get them to sign social contracts before they are elected so that when they get there, we use that as a tool to hold them. Then. Um, Again, the state houses of assembly have a critical role because by section seven of the constitution, it also gives them a lot of powers to make laws for the functions and other responsibilities that the local governments have to play. So um, for example, despite the NFIU Act, the state governments continue to sign, uh, to pass laws through the state assembly that still mandates local government to remit their fact to the state. For example, in Kaduna, the state government has established a law that has hijacked primary health care, has hijacked primary education. So when their monthly allocation comes, despite the fact that NFIU is that they must remit monies to at least nine uh, areas, environment, security, health, education. So all of these monies are depleted and whatever. So I think the next strategy for us is really to put our searchlight on the state houses of assembly because they have a critical role um, to play. But generally in Kaduna State, there are reforms. For example, all the 23 local governments have development plans now. All the 23 local governments, um, Prof said he's a, he's a CDC champion in Sabongari. So the CDC is Committee Development Charter, a bottom top approach of how citizens inform the local government budget and all of that. But despite all of these reforms, because revenues don't come to local governments, um, the state government, for example, has the tax law which mandates the state to collect revenue on behalf of the local government. And when they do, they don't remit these monies back to local government. And despite the reforms, local governments are starved of funds to actually carry out these projects that communities are nominating in that direction. So I know that we have a lot of uh, people down to make comments. So I just want to um, drop uh, here and thank you, Prof, for really 
enlightening us and educating us. Although I, this is not the first time I've been tapping from the wealth of knowledge of Prof, and I'll continue to follow his footsteps. Thank you. Thank you so much, um, Mr. Yusuf Koji. Um, that was very interesting and very articulated um, thoughts there. Um, and I believe we are all learning, and of course, probably thinking of um, next steps and action plans, how we can also get engaged in, you know, continuing this advocacy, right? Um, so, pay me, um, asking you to unmute. Let's see what you have to say. Thank you. Good afternoon. Yeah, good evening from here. Yeah, good good evening. Uh, I came in a bit late. I was with you guys when we started, but the network was bad where I was, so I had to try to get back in. So I came in while um, somebody was asking about right of occupancy in the proposed answering. So he, he made mention of local government granting right of occupancy. I would like to know if there is no nowhere in Nigeria that today where the local government grants um, what is known as customary right of occupancy for agricultural uh, agricultural land. Okay, who, who will answer that question for him? Well, I've not made any research on the, the general local governments in Nigeria. Is there anybody who can answer that question? I leave it free for you. Goje, can you answer that question for him? Hello, am I audible enough? Yes. Okay, sorry, yes, come with the yes. question again. Is is asking the local government has uh, any local government that has permission to grant land for agricultural uh, activities? Am I, no, I, I hope that's in the, it's under the control of the state. I said it alone. Yes, based on the Land Use Act, it is states that control the land. Not the local government. All right, um, OPME, I, I hope you are clear now. So local governments are now in charge of the land. It's the state government. Right? Um, okay, OPME, oh, did you... I, I'm asking you to unmute again, so yeah. Thank you very much. Uh, this question I'm asking is actually based on um, the Land Use Act, because um, there, there are sections in the land use act that specify that local governments are able to grant customary rights of occupancy for lands that are not designated as urban land. As either um, the lands that are urban land are within, within the purview of state government, but lands that are not designated as urban land are under the control of local government and they have power to grant um, customary right of occupancy. That is specifically what we call. You, you're correct, you're correct. But the, the issue is that what extent will state government allow them to function? They don't, they don't allow them to function. In sure, if you make a mistake of getting permission for a land from local government, then I'm sorry for you. Another big farm, big time farmer will come and claim that land and then you cannot do anything about it. And he'll go to the state and then get his uh, subject of occupancy. So what can you do? Which one stand higher? Okay. Uh, any other comment? My, you know, we don't have light in Nigeria. My, my battery is running down. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said it. Uh, Okay. <laughs> yeah, Prof, that, that's not a problem. It's also good that I say it because everybody, you all understand, we're Nigerians. We live here. Um, I don't know. I think conversations can also continue at the Telegram group. It can continue the WhatsApp chat. 
um, is a continuous conversation that we'll continue to have. And the students yeah, can yeah, also Yeah, I, I, I would put my uh, Twitter handle in the chat for anybody who wants to uh, chat me. Is there in the chat box? My Twitter handle. Yes, 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 yes. I can see it. So guys, the Twitter handle is there. You can follow Prof on Twitter and from there continue more engagement. You can also decide to do more research and probably to pay attention um, to what's happening in the local government, in your own local government, right? Um, and I think even, even at this point that local governments are being you know, captured by the state governors, there's still a certain amount of money that is being given to them. It's also important that citizens demand accountability um, from their councillors, from the local government chairman, with the little resources that um, they are being given, because it seems like most local governments are absolutely not functioning. You know, um, you, you go to some local governments and see what the local government should be doing, um, but those things are not active. Uh, aside the areas that Prof mentioned, like the finance, then primary healthcare and education, and um, social works rather. Sorry. So I believe these conversations will continue and it's a continuous conversation that we must have, right? So from here, um, uh, I think it's a good night from here. We'll have another class tomorrow, same time, same platform. So you prepare for it and get ready. Yeah, Lisa, uh, Maureen, I don't know if there is any other thing you want to communicate. Uh, please don't mind. Oh, sorry, sorry, before you, sorry, before you close, uh, Lisa, Maureen, and the rest of them, please, Thank you for the wonderful job. All those at the Electoral College handling the uh, foot soldiers job, please, I'm very grateful. Lisa, I could not be able to respond to your email. It's just that I'm <laughs> always on the highway, just like the ED. Uh, thank you very much, uh, the cohorts. Thank you, thank you. I remember the cohorts. I was also once a member of the cohorts. So don't think that uh, it is a big deal. Uh, I mean, it's a very big deal being a member of the cohort because I also was a member of the cohort. So stay safe and then thank you very much. Thank you so much, Prof. It's always a pleasure having you. Um, thank you, everyone. Thanks for joining the class. And um, we'll also have another class tomorrow, same time, 5 p.m. So make it to date. And good evening, everyone. Well done, Godson. Well done. Thank you. Good evening and good night once again, everyone. See you guys tomorrow.